Tonight, the boys basketball 2012 SCCAL champion will be crowned as the high octane offense of Santa Cruz invades Aptos High School to take on the Mariners. It's the CTV game of the week and it starts now. Good evening and welcome to the nightcap of the 2012 SCCAL League Basketball Championships as the boys of Aptos host the regular season champion Santa Cruz Cardinal here on community television. With Kurt Edwards, my name is Tim Swartz and uh, as I mentioned just a second ago, both these teams love to run. They absolutely do and you know, how did they get here? Well, this is the really easy way to do it. They got here by running. Santa Cruz came out on top of St. Francis rather handily, and they just ran St. Francis right off the courts. The Sharks were just too short-handed against the line changes that the Cardinals can bring out of. Aptos, they had to go through Soquel, and that wasn't quite so easy. Came down to the last 30 seconds. Soquel had some pretty good looks at the, sh at the bucket, didn't come on top. Aptos is in, but yeah, you're going to see a NASCAR race out here in a couple of minutes. And these two teams that do like to run, when you have a game between two teams that point, put points on the board, uh, what do you think is maybe the biggest thing that's going to separate these teams? Maybe turnover margin? Turnover margin, free throws. More than anything else, folks, it's going to be free throws and control of the offensive glass. Those are a couple of things that I see are going right in. Both of these clubs can shoot the free throws. We'll see who controls the boards. Santa Cruz girls won the girls' championship in overtime. We'll see if Aptos and Santa Cruz can one-up them and provide us with a great nightcap to what has been a great day of basketball here at Aptos. It's the boys' championship here for the SCCAL. Coming up next here on CTV Sports. SCCAL champion to be crowned tonight. Santa Cruz, the top seed and host Aptos here in the boys basketball finals. We're on CTV Sports, a presentation of community television of Santa Cruz County, a nonprofit membership organization serving county residents by providing education and tools to access media. Visit us online at communitytv.org. This presentation is made possible in part by the generous support of Cruz IO Internet, Santa Cruz County's largest independent internet service provider offering high-speed wireless internet, the co-location data center, and flexible work spaces with 10 gigabytes of fiber internet. Details online at cruzio.com and by the Santa Cruz Diner, where you'll always find good food at reasonable prices. Family-owned and operated since 1998, Santa Cruz Diner is kid-friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz, on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food price right at the Santa Cruz Diner. And by Craft Body Shop, serving Santa Cruz County since 1965. Craft Body Shop specializes in all types of clothes in an auto body shop repairs. Crafts offers free estimates, a lifetime warranty, accepts all types of insurance, and is diamond certified. Utilizing state-of-the-art tooling and repair equipment, Crafts dedicated staff, takes pride in resolving all of your vehicle's damages and gaining a customer for life. Call us at 476-3232 or visit the website, craftsbodyshop.com. Along with the coach, Kurt Edwards, my name is Tim Swartz. And uh, Kurt, for both these teams, we mentioned it in the open, these are two teams, they don't play in the 40s, they don't play in the 50s or 60s, they play in the 70s and 80s. No, and that's the miles per hour that they run up and down the floor. Yeah, you're right. These guys love to run the basketball and put the points up. Take a peek at the final standings for the boys division of the SCCAL. Santa Cruz on top. Aptos right behind them. Soquel, St. Francis, Scotts Valley, San Lorenzo Valley, and Harbor having a tough time, but they're in a rebuilding year. And the power, as far as the prep is all set up, pretty much the same thing all the way down, although we do bring in the NBL, Watsonville, Monta Vista Christian. Pacific Collegiate, Pajaro Valley, and Kirby Prep. Those are courtesy of the Santa Cruz Sentinel and our friends at SantaCruzSentinel.com. So Santa Cruz coming into this game as the favorite, and it should be a very interesting game between these two teams. We'll go Here's some of the keys for Joseph Smith, head man for Aptos. Transition basketball, that's going to be tough to do because Santa Cruz likes to do the same thing. 
contain that SC penetration, and that is going to be hard to do. They love to get in there, limit the turnovers, and control the boards. All going to be very uh, going to be a challenge for the Mariners this time. Yeah, Joey Smith took his team to the finals last year, where Santa Cruz just ran all over Aptos. And on the other side, for Coach Bill Domhoff, here are his keys to the game. Billy in his third year as a head man for the Santa Cruz Cardinals. Box out Jake Carell. And Jake is a very athletic individual. That could be easier said than done. Again, transition back basketball. Play transition defense. And take the good shots. And you, and you know, Tim, knowing Coach Domhoff and watching him play, they don't take too many bad shots. They work hard to get into good shots. There's a third-year man, Bill Domhoff, who... Played under Pete Newell, who's in the house here someplace. Never misses a basketball game, no one Coach Newell. So we bring in the third member of our broadcast crew, Rusty Reed, with his courtside reports. Well, Santa Cruz, they earned the right to be here as the number one seed in this postseason tournament by holding a track meet last week in their big win against Soquel. They ran right out of the gymnasium. And you can expect more of the same tonight. The Cardinals will come hard and fast at Aptos, and fatigue will not be a problem. Santa Cruz coaches Bill and Joel Domhoff will substitute liberally. All 14 guys on that bench will play, and they'll play a lot. The only exception to that is Walker Hansen is out tonight. He won't be able to play because of concussion-like symptoms, and that could be significant because Hansen scored 20 points against Aptos the last time they played. As for Aptos, they'll counter the Santa Cruz onslaught with a 1-2 inside-out punch. Inside, it'll be Jake Harrell, their big man, six foot three. He'll have to have a big night pulling down boards and scoring points, which he did in the semifinals of this very tournament. On the outside, it's Danny Victory. If Victory's hot in three-point land, you can expect a high-scoring close game. Tim? Thanks, Rusty, and that's a good point. Danny Victory, a three-point gunner. Inside, Jake Carroll. It's going to be a good one. Aptos and Santa Cruz coming up next on the CTV Game of the Week. Packed house here at Aptos High School after a sterling rendition of the national anthem, the Aptos Mariners and the Santa Cruz Cardinals here on Community TV, the SCCAL Boys Championship. It's a rematch of last year's game won by the Santa Cruz Cardinals. Joey Smith is gonna try to get a little bit of revenge with his Aptos Mariners, his starting five. Sakata is one of the guards. Victory, we're hoping to have a hot hand. Jay Carell, the center in the middle, is gonna get the big rebounds. Montoya, who we know can put up the three, and Cole Wells also at the forward position. But watch big old number 22, and there's Bill Domhoff and his Abraham, Hodges, DeMeo, Conroy, and St. John's. And as Rusty Reed has pointed out before, Hansen, who normally would be one of the starting guards, will not be playing tonight due to concussion-like syndromes. And that's a, a big loss because he is a very good player for Bill Domhoff. Packed house, as I mentioned, former Santa Cruz head coach, Pete Newell Jr. is in the house. He's uh, a guy who's had a big hand in, in really bringing up Coach Domhoff and his time to really shine here now, his turn as a, the head coach. Well, I'll tell you, Domhoff's got some scrutiny he's got Obviously, Pete Newell is former basketball coach. Bill Dodge is former baseball coach, and his dad. All sitting in here in the house. Two coaches shake hands right out in front of us. They'll go to the respective uh, blue and red corners, and they'll come out swinging. The Aptos Mariners will be wearing their road uniforms, despite the fact this is a home game for the Mariners. Just nope. like last year, the first seeded Santa Cruz Cardinals against the second seeded Aptos Mariners. And flashing back really quickly to that 2011 game, it really was uh, Santa Cruz outrunning Aptos from the start. And the second half was mostly a 20, 25 point game. Yeah, it, it was exactly that one. And the last time we saw Santa Cruz, they were against Soquel, and they won the opening tip, and the track meet began right from there. 
look for something similar to go on this one. DeMeo and Harrell will be jumping right here at center court. Tom Smith, the head referee, checks with his uh, understudies. Here we go. And Tom Smith tips this one up, and we are underway. It's the best officiating crew in the SCCAL, as it is the finals. And Smith, the head referee, who is an outstanding referee, makes the call. Here's the full court 2-2-1 two, two, pressure from Santa Cruz. Abraham doing a nice job. Montoya breaks the press. Let's see if Aptos sets up their offense or if they're going to try and hit that extra octane button right off the start. Victory averages just about two threes a game. He's a nice shooter. And here's Harrell, who's a tremendous kind of flex type player. If Harrell was the intended target of that play, his back was to the ball, but on the ground, Abraham traveled. That ball got loose. Aptos had that early turnover. And you can see the athleticism on both of these ball clubs, Tim, as they fight through screens and work their way around. Victory inbounds the ball to Sakata down low for Well. And he lost it against a very aggressive Santa Cruz defense. All five of these players will bring the ball up, including the heaviest player on the floor, the, the tight end, Jamie St. John. And he is just a little bit too out of control. Well, he saw that lane and he took advantage of it because that soft 2-2-1 two, two, zone. Bill Donhoff is telling his troops to get back. Victory pulls up and it was deflected by Abraham. St. John, great no-look pass all the way down the court. Conroy's shot is no good. Well, this is very unusual, Tim. We've played a minute and we've got double zeros on the board. Yeah, these two teams love to run. Victory all the way to the hoop. Threw that one up and he was fouled by Hodges. Blocking foul on Hodges. Just did not get his feet set, but Victory really didn't give him much of a chance. That nice little change goes right down the middle. Hodges, you can see him in midair, and that's going to guarantee you get a foul call. And if he kept his feet on the ground, maybe he would have gotten away and there would have been a charge foul. And Victory drops the first one in. That's the first point of our boys' championship. Second is in and out. Santa Cruz, the Cardinals trying to make it a sweep. The girls' championship, 60 to 56. Santa Cruz defeated Soquel in overtime. St. John, three, left wing, front iron. And that one is harmless lead to victory. Conroy really pressing that man to man, getting it out as far as he can. Face up from Harrell's little short. St. John again will bring it up. Hodges, right wing, takes it towards the lane. DeMeo, left wing, back out to St. John, and they'll reset the offense. 6-10 in the first quarter remaining. Just 1-0, the Mariners lead. And Hodges, Great. that was that one knocked her out. Great defense by Victory to block the ball on that shot by Hodges. Foul that time on Abraham, his first. Ball will be taken out of bounds right across the court from us. See Bill Domhoff. I don't see, think he's seen too many games this year where his team hadn't scored in the first two minutes. Harrell is fouled. And if that's against Hodges, that'll be his second personal. And it is. Third team foul in the first two minutes, one second of this contest. Ball's in down and up top to Sakota. Montoya cuts the lane, dishes underneath. Well, lays it up, doesn't get the shooter's roll. Numbers are for Aptos. Let's see what St. John's does wisely pulls it up. Open lane taken by Conroy, off balance, no good. DeMeo went over the back for that rebound. And that foul against Ty DeMeo is his first personal. Already the fourth team foul against the Santa Cruz Cardinals. Number three, Levy Richard comes into the game. He replaces Abraham. They break the press. Harrell, left side, lays it up with the left hand. That is done exactly how you do it. Keep the pass going from side to side. Work on the angles. 
Hodges off balance from 18, no good. Rebound tips out to Well, pass all the way up the court. St. John kept his ground and did not foul Dakota. On the other side, Ty DeMeo, first two of the game for the Cardinals. Pace trying to figure out how to be quick, but the defense on both of these ball clubs, because of their athleticness, not quite able to go around. Why? Well, looking for somebody. Well, high left wing, Harrell with contact from St. John, and that'll be another foul against the Cardinals. Six, five team fouls already. Yeah, they're gonna be in trouble if they keep this pace up with the one and one, and then of course the bonus. Good job by Harold. Spots that, comes across, gets into good shooting position, so he's going to be able to go to the charity stripe and shoot two. Harold's a very good free throw shooter, and he makes the first. Harold scored over 20 in the loss last year to Santa Cruz in. The SCCL final also here at Aptos, and he'll miss the second. A 4-2 lead for Aptos, and I'll be honest with you, Kurt, yeah, Aptos is playing well, but don't you believe that right on the bench, Joey Smith thinks they should be more, by up more than two right now? He does. How well they play defensively? Yeah, and on the other side of the bench, Bill, there's a good job by the press for Santa Cruz, forcing Victory to step out of bounds. So Santa Cruz is gonna get the ball underneath their own basket. Bill Domhoff working the officials. He's not a completely in a agreement with all of the calls. St. John takes the inbounds pass. Conroy swings the right side just into the game. It's Eli, Eli Levy Richards. And he'll lose that ball. Victory pull up wide open. 18 footer too strong. Well, Santa Cruz wants to, I mean, Santa Cruz pace is high octane, at, at, you know, at best. But they can still manage to get themselves out of it and force bad shots like that one that Jenna Hodges just had blocked by Montoya. And Harold has that one taken away. Hodges lays it up and good. Hodges almost got another steal. Way off balance, Montoya. Harrell off the glass, no good. And St. John picks up the rebounds. Quickly down the court come the Cardinals. Levy Richards swings left side. St. John pulls up, 12 footer, no good. Harrell, another rebound. See when victory comes down the court. Conroy really bothering him and it forces that turnover. Conroy all the way down to the hoop. Yeah, I'm telling you, one thing about Aptos calls a timeout. One thing about Santa Cruz, Tim, is it doesn't matter whether the numbers are in their favor as they go to transition basketball or not. Conroy saw two blue shirts, but, and so he pushed it right on down. Here's the place coming down. Sakota gets the ball. Yeah, blocked, if you will. Levy Richards with it, pushing the ball down the floor. Gives it to DeMeo, who comes in for that nice, easy layup. He almost had two Cardinals in the same area. Good job by Levy Richards just to move off to the side. Let the big fella come right down behind you, draw the defense over to him, and give the ball back for the easy layup. Six to four, the lead. Joey Smith, you see on his screen, he's already used his full timeout. Yeah, it's very unusual at this time of the ball game for a coach to use their full timeout. But I think in, in an Aptos cases, Coach Smith realized that, wait a minute, we, uh, we're up by two, but I can smell Santa Cruz starting to warm up those engines over there. They, they started to play some sloppy offense, giving the ball away. Let's stop this momentum before it actually becomes something that we can't not control. 2-2-1. Santa Cruz has not really uh, substituted the way they usually do today as well. Not yet anyways. In the backcourt, Dakota. Aptos has yet to make a substitution. Just one for Santa Cruz in the first five minutes of this one. 
Right wing, Well, up top. Harrell swings to the far side for Montoya. Motion offense, victory wide open, near wing three, front iron. That one a little too soft. And the rebound to Santa Cruz. St. John has played a little bit of the point forward. Oh, Scotty Pippen, he takes it to the hoop and he's fouled. He's quick and that nice little crossover dribble for St. John. He takes it right on in. He brings it down, watch this, the lane is open. Nice little two-footed jump and then straight up into the rim he goes. And he's strong enough that even though he's gonna get challenged and bounced, he's gonna be able to still muscle that ball right up there. Cole Well picked up the foul. That is his first personal and Ryan Parker replaces Well. St. John will make the free throw. That's nine points with four baskets by four different players for Santa Cruz. Zone, broken easily. Conroy really pushing the ball out. Notice that defense forcing it as far out as they can. Straight away, three for Montoya, and we are down to a two-point game in favor of Santa Cruz. Nice job by boxing out by Harrell. And Harrell gives it up. Down low, that one was kicked underneath by Montoya. So there goes one of those types of situations. Coaches like it if you make that pass, sometimes at the extra pass. Levy Richards made that extra pass where he actually had an opportunity to have an easy 10-foot jump shot. St. John to Levy Richards on the right wing. Hodges, face up three, way off. Again, good defense, you get in the face of the shooters. Get them out of their rhythm a little bit, and you can cause even a good looking shot to go bad. Press broken, Montoya spins out of trouble. Victory looked for the back cup from Sakota. And Victory straight away, long three. Danny Victory. And the Aptos Mariners strike back and lead 10-9. Be interesting to see if this game stays at this pace. The pace, yes. How they score. Great block by Sakota. And Levy Richards was fouled the second time by Sakota. Sakota doing a nice job. Now Levy Richards beat him going underneath, but Sakota didn't give up on him. Stayed right with him, was able to be behind him, get the block. The second time through, a little bit too much body along with that block. 10-9 lead for Aptos, two free throws for the senior, and he makes the first. <laughs> Harold comes back in the game after a brief rest. Second, he's just off. Montoya picks up the rebounds. Wide open, left wing, three. There's no good for Parker. And the rebound to Conroy. Up, St. John, all the way to the hoop. No good to Mayo, second effort is in and the foul. Good job by Mayo. Harrell contested that shot by St. John. St. John goes through that gear, watch 22, comes up, contests that shot a little bit. Looks like it might have been blocked going out of his hand, but he's not able to recover quite that fast to Mayo in the offensive rebound. We talked at the top of the show as DeMeo makes that one, giving him five points. One of the things that's gonna make it make or break this victory, and that's gonna be the offensive glass. 13-10, lead for Santa Cruz on the road. Officially, they are the home team, but they're in Aptos's home gym. Victory, as he was arm was hit, and he can't make the three. Conroy starts to push it up, wisely sees that the Transition's not gonna work, so they're gonna set up and run an offense. This is about as slow as a Santa Cruz offense will get. Still a lot of movement. Well, he almost stole that one away. Instead, St. John's beeline to the end. No good, Conroy. Second effort. As soon as anybody goes into that middle, you see two more white shirts show up there to contest 
Any of the blue clad Aptos Mariners for a rebound. Shot clock is dead. Victory up top with nine seconds remaining in the first quarter. Victory trying to shake and bake. He'll take it to the hoop. That ball is lost off the hands of Ryan Parker with 1.5 seconds left. Good defense by Levy Richards. Great job of staying right with Victory. And you're right, he was shaking and baking. He had everything going, except he couldn't get his shot off. And one was just thrown at the rim. Out of play with 0.5 seconds. Hey, hey, stack, 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 five stack. tenths of a second. So you do have enough time to catch and shoot with five tenths of a you second. You do have. They're going to run a stack with uh, St. John just a little bit off of it. Now he's going to rotate in. Whoever's going to shoot is going to have to go quick. Not that bad. <laughs> St. John gets that one rejected by Ryan Parker. And that'll do it for the first quarter of play. 15 to 10, the lead for the Santa Cruz Cardinals. And you know, I, I do think that if you go into this, uh, after going to the second quarter, just down five for Aptos, I think you got to be kind of disappointed because there was only two points for Santa Cruz in the first four minutes of this quarter. Yeah, you're right. Aptos was definitely running the pace, at least for the first couple of minutes. There's victory, just backing it up. Setting that offense, trying to get a shot off. He comes up from like 24 feet. Once, you, once he gets in that shooting rhythm, Tim, he's very difficult to stop. And that's sort of like the defender sitting there. All right, you're 20, 25 feet out. Take that shot, low percentage shot. But victory, you know, he nailed that when he has four points all the way through. And a reminder, we will have the SCCL West Wrestling Championships a week from tonight. I think another good point, too, about that last three by victory is if you're 25 feet out, but you get to take a dribble and take a step in, yeah. that 22-footer is not really that long of a shot as opposed to maybe a catch-and-shoot from, from maybe you know 19 or 18. It's, it's almost an easier shot because your momentum. You're exactly right. You are getting that rhythm momentum. You're able to get your legs underneath you and use everything going straight up. That catch and shoot. And a lot of players like to go off that, create off of that. Victory right side as we open up the second quarter to play. Parker pump fake, got his defender off balance. Went up, couldn't get it to go. Welly will get the roll. Cole doing a good job battling inside. Never gave up his position underneath the glass and was rewarded for it. Ball's worked around the arc. Over to the left wing. Levy Richards couldn't get it to go. Well, he cleans up the glass. Victory crosses to the timeline with a chance to tie this one up. Aptos continues to run. They're going to see if they can't do something backdoor. See if Harold ever posts up. But I'll tell you, Well is really posting up down underneath. He and DeMeo having a great battle. Montoya out of a screen with 10 on the shot clock. And Levy Richards takes that one away. All the way up the court. Conroy on the alley-oop. Great pass. Great body control by Conroy. DeMeo almost saved that one in. And he did run into the third row. It's off of him last. On the ball. The style of press that uh, Aptos has, if you lob that ball up there, there's your steal. Levy Richards, nice pass. Conroy showing great body control, be able to catch it, still stay in midair, and get a nice shot off. Doing a good job denying down low for Harrell, and it's going away. Levy Richards, all the way to the hoop. Conroy will put that one in. Great block by Montoya. He blocked Levy Richards shot, but you've got to credit Santa Cruz for how they tenaci their tenacity of continuing to pursue the ball and go for the basket. Well, we're awaiting the explanation for this one. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Actually. And the foul's on the original shot. It was just a real late whistle against Sakota. All right. That's his uh, his first. So they go over to Montoya trying to explain that, no, you had a, a nice clean shot. It was one of your other players that just got him with the body.
First free throw is good for Ludwig Richards. And that was the second against Dakota. Second is no good. Conroy with the rebound. And he couldn't get a free two points. Montoya, three on two, fast break, bounced it. Dakota just lost that ball. And on the other side comes Levy Richards. Takes it up himself. He is fouled by Aptos. It'll be the fifth team foul. And it'll go against Danny Victory, his first personal. Danny found himself in trouble. Watch Levy Richards. He's got that extra gear, goes through it. The defense was never set. Jake was right up there. If the shot had gone up, he'd have swatted it. Hodges. Oh, that's an awful long five seconds. That's the longest five seconds I've ever counted. Able to get the ball in. Still have a lot of time on the shot clock. Santa Cruz can get into that little weave type of a situation. They found themselves very unfortunate with a turnover. Victory. Slowly up the court. Over to the left wing. Back to victory. Rhythm three. Front iron. That one. Bounces over, you know, this basket to the left of your screen that we've seen. And it's just saying it's like the screws are loose or something. It's a lot softer, isn't it? And we've seen at least five times in the boys and girls games the ball bounce off the rim and over the backboard. Yeah, the basket right now that Santa Cruz is attacking is seems, from our vantage point, to be a lot more forgiving and softer for the shooters. St. John, the physical forward, puts it up with the foul. He goes in, that big tight end. He's got that tight end mentality. He's got that football mentality. Finds the ball. Oh, he gave him a gap. He's going to be able to take it. He uses his shoulders very well. He almost initiates the contact, but as people go for the block or try and reach in to get the ball, they hit him, so he's going to be the recipient of a free throw. It's against Welly, and it's his second personal. St. John throws it up and in, and Joey Smith's going to call a timeout. Good idea. 21-12. It has been a 6-2 second quarter thus far. And I'll ask you something, Kurt. Uh, just really, just to be blunt about it, they just haven't gotten the ball to their uh, cash cow down low at all. Jake Carroll, what do they got to do to get him the ball? Well, he's got to have to move a little bit more. They may have to do some screens down low a little bit or start him down low and then bring him up to right at the, you know, at the, the key, gets at the top of the key, or maybe right at the free throw line, right at the corner of it. They might have to do that one, but I'll tell you, they really are defending him well with their big people. DVD sales, if you want a copy of tonight's game, or games, I should say, or any of the others, learn how at communitytv.org backslash dubs. Watch how quick that defense comes right on in. Blocked by St. James, and we're already back to live action. Montoya puts it back in. There we go. Montoya with five, the leading scorer for Aptos, 21-14 with 5.35 remaining. St. John sees the three, can't get Oh that. my! And that one, that's a shooter's roll. Shooter's roll and a shooter's bounce. Went straight up and went straight in. And he leads all scorers with eight. Are you surprised that Santa Cruz has played just six players in the first quarter and three minutes? I really am. I really am, Tim. I figured we'd see at least a half, at least a dozen by now. Parker, who is a shooter off the bench, makes his first attempt. Conroy tries to just fly that one up. Tomeo tips out the rebound. And St. John will reset the offense. Give the ball out to Hodges. He's guarded by victory. Let's see how they put this in motion. Down low screen, trying to move it all the way around. Look out, the freight train's got it. And it's an offensive foul. Pushed off on Montoya. It's against St. John, second personal. And I think Jamie St. John's going to get to the bench as he is replaced by Chris Martin. Chris Martin is in. And Thatcher Samet comes into the contest. So here are your changes. He just took a little bit longer. Eight point lead for Santa Cruz, technically on the road. Although they are the home team. Victory, running into the wall of DeMeo. 
Great outlet pass. Samets. And they'll reset to Hodges. Right side, Chris Martin back to Hodges. They'll start that motion. We'll see if they can't get Martin to roll up on top. That's where he was coming from. Hodges buries a three. 11 point lead for Santa Cruz. This is more of a slow pull away by the Santa Cruz Cardinals as opposed to their traditional track meet. Although Sunday, you know, against St. Francis a couple times, St. Francis was in it for the first two quarters. <laughs> By quarter three, they blew them away. Victory knocks down a three. His second trifecta of the contest. Good ball handling. Wait to go for Hodges to get out of trouble. Levy Richards thought that one was good off his hand. He missed it. And that one is just stolen away by Samet, but he stepped out of bounds. Because one of the things you've got to do when you get the ball down underneath is start to slow it down mentally. Yeah, the clock starts to tick that you've got 10 seconds to get across, but you've got to wait for your people to come or at least start to slow it down so you don't panic and throw the ball away. Eight point advantage for Santa Cruz. Montoya bounced it down. Welly couldn't get it to go. Harrell, right into your living room, was fouled. We'll see who it's against. So they always get Levy Richards, and it'll be a one and one That's his first. And I think for, for Jake, that's going to go to the charity stripe. He's already been there once, made one. Nice rotation, gets the second one. Second. Jake Carroll cuts it to a six point lead for the Cardinals. Bill Domhoff to my right, encouraging his Cardinals on and at the same time working on a referee. Just like that. Samet to the free throw line. Levy Richards, Martin. Locked lock by Welly. And in transition. It was a foul. Levy Richard trying to stop the ball. Cut in the progress of uh, Parker. Went for the ball. Actually got it, but the two collided, and so it's going to be a blocking foul called on Levy Richards. Don't Parker wanna, gets a chance to shoot. Don't want to foul a jump shooter, especially when he's not shooting. No, there's... You watch these good jump shooters, they'll go to the free throw line a couple times, they'll get in that shooting rhythm, and all of a sudden they become hot. Parker misses this the back end, but he get one. Down to a five-point lead for the Cardinals. Martin, step back, foot on the line jumper, too strong. Levy Richards tried to just throw it up. Sam it, no. Martin, the fourth shot is in at the foul. And a crowd right behind the Santa Cruz bench absolutely erupts. Tim, you saw classic offensive rebounding putback technique. Watch it, you forget this. The ball goes up. Levi Richards barely gets it. Sam it gets it right on the ground. They catch the ball, land right back on the ground, and go right back up again. They don't allow the defender to get anywhere near him by putting the ball on the ground. Harrell picks up the miss. And victory looks to his head coach, Joey Smith, for the Aptos Mariners for some instructions. Harrell's going to be called for a foul. No. Bill Dobhoff just blew up. He is working Tom Smith, the head referee, who's inviting Coach Domhoff to have a seat. I don't blame Coach Domhoff. Harrell wasn't trying to foul, but if you take somebody, there's somebody's legs out, it's usually a foul. Levy Richards just tenacious on his defense, fights through the screen and pushes victory farther away. Harrell and Parker playing a little two-man game. Gets his passive zone. Now Harrell finally will take the three in and out. Two minutes remaining, first half, 29-22 Santa Cruz. Martin through Harrell and he lays it off the glass and good. 
Great body control. Pick was set down there, hoping to get a charge. And Martin did a nice job of just bending his way right around the defender. 31-22, 100 seconds left in the SCCAL first half of the boys game. Three-pointer left side, well. Okay, those are the types of shots that can really kill any kind of rally and spark one for yourself. Chris Martin, a laser. Martin with seven points here in just the second quarter. Harold tries to go one on two. He couldn't get it. Montoya through the lane, rejected by DeMeo. Beautifully played, beautifully. Timing is everything. You watch DeMeo, the ball gets outside. DeMeo waits, goes up, times it. Now, if you're Bill Russell, you're trying to swat it to one of your players and keep it in play. But if you want to spark the crowd, you block the ball, get it out of bounds. Now, Bill Delmhoff is being asked to sit down. I think he was just teed up as well. Well, I know that one thing, he's been given a warning. Aptos cheerleaders. Yep. We got a bench technical. So, Victory, Danny Victory is going to go see what he can do. First free throws in and out. Loneliest place in the entire gym right now is the free throw line. Seconds. Also Sometimes not you can good. get lonelier. Old saying, and now. Jamie St. John was teed up. We had a taunting foul. And I believe that's going to go against Conroy. So you can't tell me that there are not a few emotions flying around through this gym. So now Jake. Carroll is going to be able to, get to go to the free throw line. If they can make these free throws, they can find themselves back in this game. 34-26. Six points for Jake. And the second is good. And even with that, Aptos still is able to get the ball. They'll take it out right across at half court, right across from us right across from the scorer's table. This does bring back some fond memories of games, not necessarily played in this gym, but definitely Santa Cruz Aptos games of yesteryear. Pete Newell and Bill Wormerdam used to hook up at some buttes. Damn it. Look at the defense. Pushing out. You got to fight through the screen. Baptist trying to run some kind of a screen in motion game, but Santa Cruz doing a good job fighting through all the screens. Harrell. Almost traveled. Looking for help. Two on the shot clock. That one's forced up in Montoya. Great take. Just a five-point game, shot clock dead. And that is a charge against Levy Retros. And that is his third person. Now he came down the floor on the right side, turned it in on baseline. And it looked like he ran into big old number 22, who had definitely established his presence in the path. Back into live action. Ryan Parker couldn't get it to go with the shot clock dead. But this one's just stolen away. Harold takes it straight to the hoop and lays it good. 34-31. Aptos is back in it down by three. A 6-0 run. Couple of fouls, a technical, and then some sloppy basketball playing. Straight away, Hodges, long range, no good. And man, we have had a barn burner tonight between these two teams. 34-31 as they head into the locker room 
And uh, Kurt, a lot of emotion in the building tonight. Tremendous amount of emotions on this one. And you're not and you're gonna feel even more emotion as this game continues to progress. And Aptos really came back. You know, they did not give anything up. Rusty Reed's gonna try and get hold of the Aptos coach, Joey Smith, gets his thoughts on what was going on in the first half. Those first two quarters were big quarters. And we'll send it over to Rusty. Coach Smith. What a run there at the end. How did that come about? Well, we were pleased to finish the half the way we did. You know, Santa Cruz is playing well, and we just wanted to stabilize and give ourselves an opportunity in the second half. Been able to reel in that speed that Santa Cruz has been showing of late. Well, they really get after you, and you really got to maintain your composure, and you just got to keep it simple and hit the open man and, and then be aggressive when you have your opportunities. And so that's what we're going to try to do as we go into the second half. Yeah, the one element that seems to be missing, the inside game is strong. You haven't been able to really hit many from outside. Well, when they're really pressuring you, you have to try to attack them off the dribble. So sometimes, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to get the ball inside as much as you like, but we definitely like to get Jake more involved in the second half. All right, well, good luck. And there we have it, 34-31. Got close at the end. We'll be back with the second half right after this. Thirty-four, thirty-one. Santa Cruz leads Aptos halftime of the SCCAL Boys Championship, and we go courtside to the third member of our broadcast crew, standing by Rusty Reed. Okay, yes. Hey, we're with Bill Domhoff, Santa Cruz coach. So, boy, things really got uh, got crazy there at the end. Yeah, a lot of uh, competition out there amongst the boys. Uh, both teams are fighting, <laughs> and uh, as coaches, we're trying to uh, make sure that they get everything that uh, they deserve out there. So. Uh, we were asking for uh, the same calls, and uh, one of our boys clapped, and one of the officials didn't like it, and we told our guy to sit down, and you know, just stuff you don't usually see, but in a game like this, it seems to have uh, brought out the, uh, the emotions in everybody. Now, uh, it doesn't look like you guys are running or substituting like you normally do. Is that because of something Aptos is doing, or is that your decision? Um, it's basically my decision, uh, the, the matchups we have. Is, Looks like they're going really well, and uh, we don't have Walker Hansen tonight, who's, who's usually our starting guard, and uh, so that limits some of our, our rotations. All right, well, good luck in the second half. Thanks, it's going to be a wild one. Thanks for stopping by. Bill Domhoff, Santa Cruz high coach. Now over to Tim. Thanks, Rusty. That was, wow, that was a real nice job by Bill Domhoff to sit with us uh, right before this game, or right before the second half. The game gets restarted, and he was very matter of the fact of what happened, and you got to respect Coach Domhoff for really uh, kind of giving us what was really going on. That was not Coach Speak. That's what's going on in this one. No, that's what's actually going on. Take a peek at some of the highlights that we've had here. Great movement earlier in the game by Aptos as they break the Santa Cruz press. And here's one of the things that Conroy does back. A little coast to coast. Defense never got set, so Conroy says I'll take it all the way on in. Almost a steal by DeMeo, and Montoya sets up for a three, and he bangs that one right on home. Great steal, Levy Richards. He's been really kind of the catalyst and he's pushing that offense down. Good body control by Conroy to bank that one in for another two of the Santa Cruz 34 points. St. John's, he can go inside or he can go up and then a little bit higher and then in. That one actually would have cleared the shot clock if the shot clock would have been there. And Jonah Hodges, the excellent running back. On the other side, it was just a little bit too quick at times for Aptos. And you see how quick Santa Cruz kind of just gave that ball away. You've got to have patience. DeMeo looked at down court and he thought he saw somebody, but there was the Aptos Mariner right there. And Tim, I think we're going to have, we got 16 more minutes of regulation time to play. It's, it's going to be fun. The officials are going to have to probably talk to the two respective benches to make sure everything is going to be under control, but they have to do a great job on the court to communicate with the players, call the fouls properly, but more than anything else, an official on the floor, they have an opportunity to talk to the players before they make that foul. There could be something on like, okay, hands off him, hands off him. Third time, there goes the whistle. 
So officials, they can control the pace of the game. It's hard to control the emotions of these young high school athletes. The Santa Cruz Cardinals, the one seed, second seeded Aptos, the way it should be, number one versus number two in the SCCAL, and here we are, a postseason championship at stake. 34-31, Santa Cruz led by as many as eight or nine in the first half, and their lead is just three at the half. We're underway. Along with the coach, Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz. We thank you for joining us here on our conclusion of CTV basketball season. St. John in and out on his shots. That was to that rim to the left of your screen, which has been kind of loose tonight. It has been. There's an almost steal by DeMeo. Good anticipation. Ball still on the floor. St. John's got it. Conroy has it. What a pass. Conroy, he lays it up and in. And St. John uh, just made a great 50-foot football pass. Montoya has that one blocked by DeMeo, but on the weak side, Harrell lays it up and in. Good presence by Harrell. Did not give up on that play. He was down there for a rebound, and he got some garbage. Conroy for three. Santa Cruz coming out, trying to establish some offensive presence. It was a three-headed monster. Montoya, Victory, and Harrell, who each had seven in the first for the Aptos Mariners playing on their home court. Here's St. John. He's going to go strong to the hoop. No good, but he was fouled from behind by Montoya. Montoya's got to go up and contest that shot. There's, a, there's you know, different philosophies, but at this point in time, ball is out. One thing, St. John's is a big freight train coming to Ron Losey. Almost got taken out for lunch. <laughs> first one's good. St. John led all scores along with Chris Martin in the first half with eight. Well, what I was going to say about Montoya, he's got to get up there and contest that shot. If he, if he fouls St. John and goes to the free throw line and St. John misses any one of those two shots that he did on that one, a little bit of a bonus goes for the Aptos Mariners. Harrell, you see after he takes the rebound, quickly up the court. Victory, right wing, open three, front iron, no good. Montoya took the rebound, he misses a nice little 10-footer, loose ball foul. It's gonna be Montoya with a push. A little more, more than anything else, Tim, that's more of a frustration foul for the Aptos Mirrors, a shooting frustration foul, he thought he probably had it. He just shoved one of those Cardinals away. Hodges, all the way to the hoop. Great pass, a little too hot to handle though for DeBeo. He could have, he didn't have to use too much mustard on that. Now nah, he really threw a fastball on that play. DeMeo's good first baseman for Santa Cruz with the, on, for the baseball team, but didn't have his glove on. Montoya crosses the timeline. Left side, Harrell against DeMeo. Can't slice it in. This one is St. John stealing it. The three on one, St. John, no look pass. His shot's no good. Conroy is blocked out of bounds by Welly. Abraham had the first crack at it, and he just couldn't really get a good grip on it. St. John, nice little pass to Abraham, who just did not, he did not only did he grip, yeah, and he didn't have that good rhythm to take it up for a layup. Out of a break, DeMeo puts it up with the foul. Third against Welly is DeMeo, puts it up in the mask and the foul. Well, one thing you don't want to do if you're Avcos is have some of your big men get in foul trouble. Santa Cruz can keep coming right on at you. It's interesting listening to Bill Domhoff saying he likes his matchups. That's why he's not subbing. Montoya strong to the hole. You gotta look down and look up, and this three-point game is all the way already up to an eight-point lead for Santa Cruz. And well, the they way can score quickly. Yeah, the way these two teams play, you don't want to blink. Conroy to the lane, and he's fouled. I think if I'm Conroy, I just continue to work my way right on through because that's going to be on the floor. A pat. He's going to was trying to pass the ball when he got fouled. If you've got that opportunity, you might as well take it right on up to the rack and see if you're going to get. The old-fashioned three-point play. Abraham to Hodges, right wing. Dumps it, 
Conroy, right side. This one's deflected. Conroy to the corner. Releases up top of St. John. St. John through the lane, dishes off. DeMeo, two shorts. Conroy, rebound. St. John, 12-footer. Notice the calmness that Santa Cruz had underneath. Timeout, Aptos Mariners. Joey Smith says, I've had enough of this rebound stuff. There's the assistant coach, Joel Domhoff, getting, uh, getting the spy camera ready. <laughs> Domhoff gate. Joel, who teaches up at UCSC, his dad, who's uh, right across the way, sitting next to Bill Dodge, also teaches up, and then his brother, Bill, who teaches at Santa Cruz, third year at Santa Cruz High School as the basketball coach. Here comes the big man. He gets underneath. DeMeo doing a nice job, but he continues to fight for the ball. Conroy's got it. Nice court awareness and nice vision to give it out to St. John, who is just inside the free throw line. I think St. John deserved that basket. He came in, created a nice look for DeMeo, and hey, the basketball gods rewarded him with an open 12-footer. Sports gods are interesting in how they reward you for a good, solid effort. 10-point lead for the Santa Cruz Cardinals. I mean, you don't want to maybe put one team ahead of all the rest, but I think from your time in this area, you think Santa Cruz, maybe you would say the, the New York Yankees of the SCCAL and all the previous leagues? They might be. You know, they, they very well might be, especially in, in, the, in the basketball. Both these teams could be the, the New York Yankees or the uh, Dodgers Cardinals, if you will. They're always at the top, always battling each other. And Parker off balance is no good. Parker brings some scoring off the bench and he replaces Sakota. Hodges, St. John's really thought about it. He's got some strength on Montoya. But Montoya had great position and forces St. John all too far underneath the basket. 15 on the shot clock. Good steal by the Mariners. Harrell, spin move. Drives to the lane, dishes, Montoya lays it up and good as DeMeo, he tried to swipe the ball and Montoya just laid it up and good. Abraham off balance, no good. Sometimes you gotta wait for that defense to get set up so they have an opportunity for a rebound. Victory, pull up three, rattles through, and it's down to a five point lead for the Cardinals. Third three pointer for victory on the evening. That three-point play, when the ABA came up with that one, that was a great addition to basketball. St. John gets the screen, pull up, and he can't get the roll from 18. Victory wants to gun it again. This one is blocked by DeMeo. Parker pumps it, looks to rotate up top to Montoya. Five-point lead for Santa Cruz, 3.30, remaining in the third quarter. They'll reset the offense. High right side to Montoya, out of the screen. Harrell drives to the lane, and he falls. Falls off of him out of bounds. Good defense, very good defense by Abraham that time. Here comes Harrell around the corner. Abraham able to stay right in front of him and then get his hand right on top of the ball, and Harrell could not do a thing. Hodges slowly up the floor. Snaps that ball around. Good rotation by the Cardinals. Levy Richards can get it in. And here is the fast break. Harrell just lost a handle there, and they'll have to reset to their half-court offense. Montoya bumped by Conroy. That's a nice move by Montoya. A little stutter step. Conroy came up, didn't have good balance on his approach defensively. As Montoya was starting to go around him, he was fouled. Victory off the inbounds play. Had an open three left wing for a moment. They still worked the ball around. Victory left wing three is no good. Harrell fights for the rebound. It's kept alive. Well, off the pump fake and the pass fake. Kisses it off the glass. Three point game. Good use of his body to buy space underneath the basket. Hodges aggressive through the lane. Loses this to DeMeo, looking for some help. Levy Richards, up top, St. John asks 
for a pick, and he put that one up and was fouled by Montoya. It's not every time, Tim, that St. John starts to go to the rack that he's fouled, but almost every time Jamie takes it out, and you can see he asked for the clear out. He had the mismatch that he wanted, and he saw the lane, and he took advantage of it. Two for Jamie St. John was the first player into this game into double figures. And he makes the first free throw. He was our George H. Wilson player of the game last time out. 13 points unofficially on the night for Jamie. And the second. I like that rotation. I like the release when he shot that ball. Very nice. Good pressure defense. But victory steals it back for the Aptos Mariners. That's one of those where you just start to play the game a little bit too fast, Tim. You got that steal down on your end. You can bring it all the way up, let the offense come back down, set it up. You've got 30 seconds to shoot the rock. So take all, if you need all 30, take it. 2-10, showing on the third quarter clock, 47-42. Santa Cruz leads Aptos, seeing a foul offensive, a moving screen. Foul against Parker, number 21. So Ryan, the 6'1 guard, he's a senior. Now I can hear everybody yelling for Jamie, so let's see what, how they rotate through. St. John posting underneath against Parker. Push and shove down there. Good tenacity by St. John as he stays right after the ball. Freddie Richards comes through the lane. Jump ball, possession arrow, pointing to Aptos. He's got to be able to, he starts to come down. He's got to be able to look for that open man or somebody's got to be able to move to get open so he can see him. Neither one happened. He got the jump ball and Aptos has the ball. Just a five point game. Seems like multiple times tonight, Kurt, that, it, that Santa Cruz has had the opportunity to, to maybe run away with this. Dakota tried to keep it in and he flies out of bounds. Not quite. He almost ended up in the parking lot trying to save that ball. Good effort by Dakota. Yeah, you're right. You get five, here come the Mariners. Maybe they get up to seven, here come the Mariners. So this game is far from over. St. John up the left side. Down low, DeMeo has that one blocked by Harold. Good job by Harold. Now DeMeo's got to get back and play defense. He can't stand around back there. Right wing, well, big three on the way, in and out. Rebound tipped around, Harold fights for it. He keeps it alive. Parker, wide open, three on the way, got it! Just a two-point lead for the Cardinals. The reason for that one is the hustle by number 22, Jay Carroll. Santa Cruz still going down the middle. Harrell with another block. Harrell. Santa Cruz continues to attack the center. And Harrell picking up another block. Now you want to rally a crowd, block the ball, or dunk it. <laughs> That'll send this place into orbit. Levy Richards, release it to Sammy. They want to isolate for St. John, instead up top for Hodges. Victory reaching in, trying to disrupt the flow of the offense. St. John was given the open three by Victory, he took it and he missed it, shot clock dead. Chance for Aptos to take the lead going into the fourth. Gonna go with Victory, who is a very good three-point shooter. Here come Harrell's up to the top. Set that screen, not there. Sakota fights his way, couldn't get it to go. Two seconds left. St. John flings this one up, it's good if it goes. High off the backboard and no good, 47-45. It's still a real close game between these two teams. And I think Aptos, even though they only won that quarter by one point, have all the momentum going into the fourth. I think they do. They're, they're setting up to play good defense. And, and I just like the way that they're starting to move the ball offensively. 
At the Santa Cruz Diner, you always find great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1998. Santa Cruz Diner is kid friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. The great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz, on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food, price right, at the Santa Cruz Diner. Well, here was a, a big three, the last basket of this first half. It was off of just a, kind of a wild turn of events. Well, Jake Harrell is the one that does that as his ability to get down on the floor and go after that loose ball and then has the cool presence of mind not to panic gets it to an open mariner who finds parker over on the on the left side with a nice angle and very good shooting rhythm just yep. watching some of these guys shoot such as danny victory and ryan parker they come up they've got that nice little 45 degree elbow and they just release it right off their fingertips very sweet shots Jamie St. John, the excellent tight end for Santa Cruz's football team. And slaps that ball and almost pops it. Into play. Fourth quarter underway, eight minutes left, potentially more. We've already wow. seen an extra four earlier on today. Double high pose for Santa Cruz. DeMeo looking for somebody, nice rotation. No panic, there should be anyways. St. John travels. Oliver tripped over the top of DeMeo's foot. Just happened to be there. Conroy checks back in for Salmon. And Conroy had two in the first quarter, excuse me, four in the first quarter, and he had five in the third. He's more or less been one of those offenses. He, St. John, and DeMeo pretty much carry the load offensively. One thing about Santa Cruz, they do spread the wealth out. Out of a screen, Parker looks to victory. Pump fake, back out to Parker straight away. Find the open man, it was for a moment Montoya underneath and it's punched out of bounds by Conroy. So it stays with Aptos, 17 on the shot clock. Nice scrambling defense by Santa Cruz where they were jumping around getting themselves out of position, but the hustle got him back. Montoya, the senior shooter for the lead. 48-47, Aptos has their first lead since the first quarter. Victory is a spot up and he didn't even hesitate. St. John is partially deflected the sixth block of the game for Harold. Here's where patience comes in, Aptos, has the lead. Victory, heat check. He was fouled, though, by Conroy. Now, why Conroy is that far out? Victory fired that thing. It had to be about a 33-footer. Conroy was coming at it. Watch as he comes up. He's just going to cast it. Conroy comes up and just runs right into him. You know, for my money, shoot that shot. Now, Victory is on fire. He is... Already nailed four threes in this game, including the last one that gave Aptos their first lead since early in the first quarter, and he makes the first of two free throws. Both these teams playing for a league championship. Santa Cruz took the regular season crown, and they're the one seed. On the road, though, against Aptos, the two seed. Three free throws for victory, and he misses the second. That foul is a big one against Conroy. It was his third personal. St. John checks out, and a guy who had a very Quietly, just great first half. Chris Martin, who had eight points in the first half, comes back in. <laughs> Martin had to check out and chuck back in because he didn't have a shirt tucked in. Rules. Hodges up the court. The player of the year in football, Jonah Hodges, a senior, backdoor cut. Conroy lays it off the glass and good. He's got nine. And Conroy's called for another foul. He knocked off Parker 
That's the third team foul against the Santa Cruz Cardinals. And those are two not the most intelligent fouls that you're going to get because of the distance they are away from the basket. That's the fourth against Conroy as well. That is one where I'm sure Coach Domhoff is going to have to get number 11 out. Harrell cuts to the basket and lays it good. The leading scorer, the senior, stepping up with 11, 52, 49, 615 remaining. Hodges uh, trying to clear out, gets the ball down inside to Conroy. Releases up top, Levy Richards, the senior bench player. Left wing for Martin, drives in on Montoya, off balance. And the foul is on the floor. It'll be the seventh team foul. And it's against Montoya, his second personal. As hard as Montoya plays, it's hard to say that he's only got four. He did beat Martin to the spot, but he did not establish a position. So Martin wisely kept coming, pulled it up, made that shot attempt. It's a rematch of the 2011 game, which was won by the Santa Cruz Cardinals. They just blew out Aptos right here in Aptos. First free throw is good. And a big front end of the one and one for Martin, who's a very good free throw shooter. And he's two for two tonight. You mentioned it before the game, Kurt. Free throws are going to be very important in this one. Oh, you can get this, this close. These two teams are very close in talent. Martin missed the second. Loose ball off of Harrell. That time, DeMeo was contesting for that rebound. And Harrell trying to gain control, just could not. Just gets it out of bounds. Jonah Hodges will take it out right above you. Levy Richards, three off balance, was kind of backing up. Parker just lost that ball through his legs all alone. Sometimes you can be too quick. Grab the rebound, hold the ball up, see where you're going to go. Two hands. Exactly. Hodges off the inbounds play. Levy Richards flies through the rain, and his floater's no good for Harrell. We mentioned Harrell being the leading scorer for Aptos. He's had a solid game with 11 points, but he has about six blocks, more than 10 rebounds, and he's been just a monster doing everything. He is, and now he's got the ball from way out high. Great pass. Parker's rhythm threes in and out. Good job by Martin. Corrals the rebound and gets it out. St. John's numbers are not in my favor. Still in a man to man is Aptos. Hodges terminates. Turn around. Bank shot. Old school shots. I like old school shots and I like that little move. Evenly divided. Pack gym tonight, Kurt. It is. This is. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. And huge crowd. Harrell with just a little bit of a push. He says he was standing there. Jonah Hodges with a pretty good acting award, too. We'll take a look at this one again, Kurt. Harrell's about ready to set that screen. Just a little bit of a leg flinch by Harrell, and that's all it took for the referee to call that foul. you got to wait till the... the the screen is set until you can roll. He rolled before the screen was finished. Exactly. DeMeo coming up on top. Nice move underneath. Backdoor cut to Chris Martin. He's in a double figures. The fourth different Santa Cruz Cardinal to get into double figures. Balance scoring, 54-52. Santa Cruz retakes the lead. Victory all the way to the hoop, no good. Well is fouled from behind by St. John, and he'll have a chance to tie the game with two free throws. St. John was either going to foul him or take his head off. Both were going to result. All the way underneath on the far side. Really didn't do a good job of boxing out. And well, he was able to get that rebound, time it right, get St. John up in the air, and go up and make that shot attempt. Knocks down the first. A sophomore. He kind of reminds you of Harrell in a way. The same height. They both have good touch. Harrell has about 20 pounds on him, but just give Welly a couple years and he'll add some muscle to that frame. Well, Cole's done a nice job tonight underneath. He really works hard, gets his body in good position, and you know is able to fend off some of the bigger and stronger Santa Cruz players. 
54 all, 440 remaining. SCCAL championship on the line. First seed at Santa Cruz. Hodges' is three is in. Jonah Hodges joins the double figures party. He's got 10. That's a big shot and a tough shot by Hodges. Really didn't establish any rhythm. Good job by Danny Victory to continue to push up the floor against Jonah Hodges. Hodges with the block called against him. Half the crowd thinks that's a great call. The other half doesn't. Emotions high. There were a couple of technicals in the first half. One against Bill Domhoff. And one was assessed to a player on the bench for clapping, Clayton Conroy. 57-54, Santa Cruz has the lead. Victory, long range bomb in and out. Good job by Samet to collect that rebound. He saw where it was going, immediately went right to it. Mark of a good rebounder, anticipate then go get it. And it's a 10 second violation against Hodges. Hodges has brought it up slowly and the correct call, there were actually 24 seconds on the shot clock when that was called. Yep. Sometimes the officials won't get into that 10 count until you started to come up the floor. Montoya to Well, had the open three, gave it up to victory. Good idea with 27 on the shot clock. Montoya right wing, Welly down to the right block. Harrells turn around, partially deflected. And the rebound to Samet. Great defense by St. John's, did not give up any ground. Harold tried to back him down, couldn't do it. Hesitation move, no look pass. DeMeo lays it up and in. Good job, knowing where your players are on the floor, your teammate is crucial. Just six Cardinals have scored. After last week's game of the week, there were 13 different Cardinals that scored against Soquel. Aptos has just played six players. Montoya up the short corner. Looking to release. Victory with eight on the shot clock. Goes one on one with Hodges, crosses him over. Off balance, floater, gets the roll. 59, 56, under three minutes remaining in the game. Aptos trying to come back and retake the lead. I'm just trying to get a step on victory, and victory's just as quick. St. John, fade away. Too strong. Montoya takes the rebound. Parker pulls up, 17-footer, front iron, no good. And the rebound to Hodges. Oh, and Hodges bought another foul that time on Harrell. Harrell's pleading his case, but he's not going to get it. Jonah Hodges did a nice job of getting that rebound and then going to secure it. Harrell made the, if, if he did commit the foul, which he did, his lone great mistake was then trying to reach around and see if he couldn't get the ball away from Jonah Hodges, number 20, who now goes to the free throw line. If the player's got, you, got his back to you, let him go. No sense in reaching. Because more times than not, Tim, an official is going to call it the reach. One and one, misses the front end. And Well just tipped the rebound to Sakota. He was tied up, and the position arrow is pointing to Aptos. Here's the replay of that last Hodges has got it. There's where Harold reaches over. That's where he's got it, yeah. Jonah made a fire to elbow, but it was, but it was after the fact. Victory up the court to Sakota. Three point lead for, Ap for Aptos to try to come back from. Well in the lane as he falls down, it rolls through. Great job by Well to break underneath. Horrible defense that time by Santa Cruz. Hodges gave up the turf by leaping up on top. Nice set, nice pick set by DeMeo. But defensively, Tim, you've got to stay on your feet. You can't just go jumping all over the place because then you put the rest of your team in jeopardy. Sakota up the court, right side. Montoya back to Sakota. Had the open three, didn't take it. Three-point lead for Santa Cruz. 100 seconds remaining. Sakota, right wing, victory. Off balance, three, can't get it in. Harrell gets a strong rebound. Against St. John as he falls down, he lays it in. 
61-60 lead for Santa Cruz, 125 left. Tied up, Bill Domhoff. Bill Domhoff with his timeout. What a battle underneath we're seeing between Harold and St. John's, especially down on the aft toss end. Harold fights for it. He realizes he's going to go up against a bigger guy. What you're trying to do down there is a couple of head fakes. If you feel that your defender is starting to settle and he's not going to get off the ground, go up as quickly as you possibly can. Victory with sort of a leaping Lena. There's the battle underneath. There's one little head fake, and then it's a nice little fall away jumper. Beautifully executed, puts his body up against St. John. Maybe leans into him just a little bit and falls away. That was great touch by big number 22. Jake has been having, a, again, another fabulous game. He loves it when the red lights are here. Yeah, every time we come here, Jake Harrell scores at least 20. He's up to 13 tonight. Hodges to inbound it. Now when Rusty Reed talked about what Aptos had to do, they're getting a good game from Mr. Inside, Harold, Mr. Outside, victory. But they're also adding Parker to it. Conroy looks for a cutter, 15 on the shot clock. DeMeo with the handoff. Martin goes right to the hole, throws it off the glass and good. Three point lead for Santa Cruz, a minute remaining. Good body control all the way through. Victory, see if he can come up with some of that three-point magic. Great defense by Santa Cruz, maybe a little bit too exuberant, but Aptos says, Joey Smith says, I need to call a timeout. The situation for you, 63-60. Santa Cruz leads Aptos, 50.8 seconds remaining. It's a full timeout called for by the Aptos Mariners. The Mariners are not yet in the bonus. Just five team fouls against the Cardinals and nine team fouls against the Aptos Mariners. So from here on out, it will be two free throws at least for Santa Cruz every single time they're fouled. Making sure everybody, the referees know how many timeouts each side has. 26 seconds to go in this timeout. Big timeout. A lot of strategy being talked down there in the Aptos huddle and right next to us. Bill Domhoff going over some strategies to the Cardinals of Santa Cruz High School. Draw up that play for a, for a basket. The one thing both these teams need, Tim and the coaches preach it all the time, is patience. If you get the ball on a rebound, Cover it up. Possession arrow looks like right now it's in favor of Santa Cruz. Victory takes the inbounds pass. Harold, handoff, victory. 15 seconds, back to victory. The three, got the tie! 40 seconds left. Well, off the timeout, it was a pretty simple game plan from Joey Smith. Two-man game, Danny Victory and the big man, Jake Harrell. 63-all, 39.3 seconds left. Still plenty of time, 35 seconds on the shot clock. So even if Santa Cruz takes it all the way down to the last second before they make their basket, Aptos is going to have about four or so ticks on the clock, three ticks on the clock before it goes. It's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, nice pass, nice rotation on a screen. St. John's rotated back over to Harold, and Hodges stayed over with him. So all's, all's victory had to do is just break over to his right a couple of spaces, and Jake saw him. Beautiful pass, great rhythm on the shot. And the great thing about that shot, 39 seconds left, which means if you can uh, not give up an offensive rebound, you'll be able to, to get it the last shot, at least for Aptos with Joe Smith. Jack Smith, the uh, assistant coach, also going his 
adding his two cents. Yeah, and the big thing about that uh, three, as I just mentioned, is that there's a 4.3 shot clock, game clock differential. So Aptos, as long as they don't give up an offensive rebound, will have a chance to uh, to have a chance to, to have a shot. So yeah, it won't be a last shot situation. A little equipment timeout is uh, looks like DeMeo's got to tie up his sneaks. Conroy underneath the baskets. Conroy looking to inbound the ball. Over to DeMeo. Very soft. Aptos giving it up. They'll pick it up tight when they get across half court. 25 on the shot clock. St. John swings left wing. Conroy running the weave up top. Chris Vic Martin. Victory doing a good job of dogging Hodges. Hodges swings left side for St. John. He loses the ball. It's regained by the Cardinals. Just three on the shot clock. Hodges, the three for the lead. No good. The rebound's out of play. Shot clock violation. 3.2 seconds left. Joey Smith's got one timeout left. We call it. I think he called Aptos, calls the timeout. Yes. 3.2 left. You're, as you said, Tim, it'd be an interesting diagram to see what they're going to do. Danny Victory, no doubt. He's got the hot hand. He's looking for his shots. He's looking for his shots any, anytime he gets inside half court. 3.2 seconds is how much time's left, and that's about three dribbles. We're listening to Bill Domoff. Okay. We get a steal, go to the rack, and get down. Let's see, one, two, three, let's see. And he's got 3.2 seconds left. Here's the interesting thing, too. It might be a little bit dangerous, but Santa Cruz does have a foul to give. I think it's a little bit too dangerous on this one. It's going to be interesting to see who takes it out for the Aptos Mariners, and they're going to be taking it out underneath their own bucket. Defensively, we're going to see you've got to know where Jake Harrell is, and he's underneath. St. John's going to go back underneath and guard him. Stay with that soft 2-2-1 zone. It looks that's what, like what uh, Santa Cruz is going to do. You know what? They're going to put more time on the, on the clock as well because there was 39.3 seconds left. So if it is a 35 second violation, it should be 4.3 seconds left. You're which right. is giant because that's an extra dribble of the ball. Sometimes two dribbles of the ball, but it's definitely a little bit more. Bill Domhoff barking out the direction. There you are, 4.3 seconds it, it, remaining. It doesn't matter if you're fumbling with the ball either. It's 35 seconds and that's it. Yeah. Here we go. Victory takes it, three seconds left. Two, victory off balance, no good. And we are going to overtime again here for the SCCAL Championship. Santa Cruz 63, Aptos 63. You've gotten your money's worth if you've come out here to Aptos if you're watching at home. It's the game of the week. And we'll take a break and be back after this. 63-63 here on the SCCAL Boys Varsity Championship. Aptos 63, Santa Cruz 63. The 32 minutes stay a lot, not enough. We've got four more overtime. Along with Kurt Edwards, Rusty Reed, the third member of our broadcast crew, I'm Tim Swartz. We thank you for joining us all season long for basketball season. We've had a pair of gems. The girls' championship was won by Santa Cruz in overtime, and here we are in overtime for the boys. This one is to the Santa Cruz Cardinals. Well, I would say it's a good thing we got a barn burner and we're in this new gym here at Aptos. Oh, yes. Darn, the old one would probably been in flames by now or burnt down. Great job by St. John's coming through the key. You see his arms outstretched, asking for the ball. Big, strong young man gets in good position. Now, fouls called. He's going to go to the free throw line. St. John will have two double bonus. 
Takes a long time at the free throw line. And he misses the first one. Maybe thought about it a little bit too much. Sometimes thinking is dangerous in sports. Second for St. John. Important for Aptos to screen off on all of their free throws, on these free throws. And he missed the first one short, the second one long. Montoya crosses the timeline. 63 all, 335 remaining in overtime. Aptos trailed most of this game, but victory hit a late three to tie this one up with 39 seconds remaining. Victory drives right baseline, the off-balance shot, he was fouled by Hodges. I'm watching Danny as he as he plays this game with reckless abandon. Whether he knew he was going to get fouled by Hodges or not, he came in and he just threw that ball up. Harold doing a nice job. There's out there, and Harold actually does a good job of coming back in and not so much of a moving pick, but he backs everybody up. Victory makes the first one, so Aptos draws first blood. Victory with 19 after that shot. Make it, still 19. Harrell had the rebound, he rips it away from Conroy. Right, Conroy and steals it back. Yeah, this game has been a hard fought game. Conroy down the lane, over Montoya is no good. The rebound for a moment went to Martin, it's still loose. Jump ball. Jump ball going at Costa's way. And the Santa Cruz Cardinals, the outright SCCAO regular season champions, they're the one seed. See the all-important possession arrow, and it always switches after the ball is inbounded. Second seeded Aptos here at home. Last year's champion was Santa Cruz over Aptos. Harrell through the lane. Rolls that one off the backboard. 66-63. The first three-point lead for Aptos since the start of this one, really. It's the first quarter. Conroy pulls up, swings right side. Hodges has already hit three threes. Doesn't take it through the lane, way off balance. And a foul called against Aptos. Aptos gets that foul called. Santa Cruz continues to attack the middle. Hodges goes down there, runs right into Montoya. He's Harrell. gonna go to the three, free throw line, but Harold continues to just impress me. Third personal against him. Hodges makes the first. Hodges, who had seven points in the fourth quarter, hopes to come up big with these two free throws. In and out with the second. And Santa Cruz in overtime is just one for four at the free throw line. They trail by two to Aptos. 2.30. Overtime. Aptos can't lose the pace, but they can sure delay that shot. Of course, it's in the hands of Danny Victory. He can shoot it from Mid-court. He's already hit a couple of shots from 25 feet away. Victory floats this one through the lane, gets the roll. So quick is Victory. You turn one way on him, you give him in a lane, he's going to take it. Hodges, hesitation, dribble drive, short. Conroy floats it in. Hodges almost forced the turnover. Substitution. Yabi Abraham comes in for Chris Martin. Giving up a little bit of size for maybe just a little bit more quickness is Coach Dom Hoff. And they're going to put Abraham on victory. He's grabbing him in the backcourt. And it'll be the one and one for Danny Victory. And Martin coming right back in for Abraham. I think Abraham was just brought in for one minor purpose. And it could be just to commit that foul. The run end is a big one. Victory has been huge. The smallest player to play for either team at 5'6". But he stood tall with 22 points. And the second. That's the first two big. possession lead for Aptos since early in the first quarter. Hodges asking for a clear out. Aptos really being tenacious with the defense. Dakota knocks the ball out of play. 150 remaining. 70-66. Aptos in the one and one bonus. Santa Cruz in the double bonus. Possession arrow is pointing 
to Santa Cruz. Thanks for joining us here in our CTV Game of the Week. St. John, a little careless with the ball. He was lost for a moment, resets to Hodges with 15 on the shot clock. Still a lot of time, no sense to panicking, but Santa Cruz has got to get a handle on that suitcase. Hodges pushing him farther and farther out under Just throws that one towards the basket. St. John collects it, makes a play, and lays it good. That young man continues to impress me, not only on the football field, but especially here on the basketball court. Victory up the floor. Swings right side for Harrell. Tosses up top. Well, backdoor cut. And a travel. Oh, big turnover. Huge turnover by Aptos. They had a golden opportunity to score as DeMeo made a rush of trying to get the it's ball. Hesitated. To... Yep, you hesitate, you lose. I don't care where you're at. Minute remaining. Two-point lead for Aptos. The second-seeded Mariners trying to upset the first-seeded Santa Cruz Cardinals. Martin, left wing, dishes right side. Hodges hit some big shots tonight. In the lane, off balance, in and out. But he'll get his own rebound. Wide open for the lead, short. Montoya fights for the rebound. DeMeo's on the floor. Timeout called for by Bill Domhoff. 39.2 seconds remaining. 10 second shot clock, game clock differential. Great timeout call by Bill Domhoff. You don't know what's gonna happen. DeMeo's got the ball on the deck. He's got control of it. Give that timeout call, rally before something horrible can happen. This look rather familiar. You got 29 on the shot clock and about and 39 on the game clock. A regulation ended with a 39 seconds remaining on the clock. Santa Cruz had the ball, the fresh shot clock. They never got a ball to even hit the rim. It was an off balance three that was wide. On the other side, Aptos never got a good look at the basket in the last four and a half seconds of the game. You see Joey Smith, you see the fans, the thumbs up. This one is a, a game that I think is going to make a lot of the people in the stands SCCAL basketball fans. Still three timeouts remaining for Santa Cruz. Just one for Aptos. Teams break the huddle. It's Dakota, Montoya, Harrell, Welly, and victory for Aptos. DeMeo, Conroy, Martin, St. John, and Hodges are the five for the Cardinals. A lot of time if Santa Cruz can get in a rotation. Big man working underneath. Martin. Here comes Martin. Off balance, no good. Conroy's second effort ball is loose. And it's a jump ball. Possession is pointing to Santa Cruz. Shot clock will be dead. 25 seconds left. 70 to 68. Mariners lead the Cardinals. Now remember, Santa Cruz just needs two. If they get three to get up by one, fantastic. But they're just looking for right now for a basket. A good percentage look. Aptos played Soquel the other night for Aptos to get here. Same type of a situation. Aptos is up by three. Soquel had two good looks, but was not able to get it in the bucket. So actively, you know, for defense, Aptos has to be actively. Hands up, moving their feet. Stay in good defensive position, good athletic position. Shot clock is dead. 25 seconds left. Possession arrow has switch to the Aptos Mariners, which has been key in overtime, already two tie-ups. And by winning the tip, Santa Cruz has won an extra possession. Conroy all alone lays it good. It'll be the final shot for Aptos if they play it right. Joey Smith, I just heard him yell to his team, motion offense. 12 seconds left, overtime number one, 70 all. Everybody's gotta know where the defender, where their offense is. He's saying go. Victory. Here comes victory. Step back, rejected by Hodges. Sakota's shot is not even close, and we're going to overtime number two. We will keep it here, 70 all. Huge defensive play by Hodges. He can settle, he, he watched him settling pretty much the way he played cornerback for the football team. Sat back, read, looked, 
waited for victory. He was going to be outside of his range, I think. But, you know, I don't think victory knows what his range is. I think he knew, too, that victory's had his go-to moves with the step-back jumper as well. Hodges not given any quarter. Keeps that hand up. There's that step back. That step back, and Hodges is so quick, he was able to go forward. But, Tim, in this one, Hodges didn't lunge forward. He stepped forward in good athletic position and then was able to go up and block that shot. Had he lunged, he may have been off balance and then collided with victory, and that would have sent victory to the free throw line. And we'll take another look at the... Loose change picked up by Conroy, who tied up this one. Uh, he just got lost in the exchange on that one. Victory was looking someplace else. Nice little bounce pass inside by Hodges. And Conroy had the presence of mind to know exactly where he was and the basket was. Packed house here at Aptos High School. 70 all. We will go to overtime number two. Why not? We're not doing anything else tonight. Oh, you, I'm not. I don't know anywhere else you'd rather be in Santa Cruz County tonight than the Aptos Gym. And anybody who's come for both games, it's been a long day and a great day of basketball. It's the girls' game. If you didn't get to check that one out, it was a victory, 60 to 56 in overtime for Santa Cruz. Opening tip of the second overtime. Once again, goes to the Cardinals. And we are in overtime number two. Martin pulls up at the free throw line. Off balance, it's no good. And that one is knocked out of bounds by Conroy. Martin really more shot put that shot than getting a nice little rhythm using his wrist and just flipping it up wrist and forearm. More of a push, and you can see that ball come out of his hand awfully hard. Dakota up the court, back to victory. Right side for Montoya. Harrell bounces it. Victory, open three, can't get it to roll in. Martin cleans up the glass for the Cardinals. You want him in, you want big number 32 in there. So he can do that. He's got great timing on his leaping ability. Hodges throws this one up from 10 feet away. DeMeo knocks the rebound up top. Extra man open. St. John will take it himself. Bounces that one off the backboard. It's no good. Victory. Works it in transition. Dishes. Montoya goes up strong. His shot's no good. Victory. Gives up the open three. 15 foot. Pull up is in. Good decision by Victory. He had Conroy running right at him. Little head fake. Conroy flew right on by. Martin, given the open three, takes it. Back iron, no good. And Hodges had the rebound, but it was knocked away from him by victory. Santa Cruz is getting some open looks. I'd like to see him a little bit higher percentage shots. But they're just not right. They're not in shooting rhythm right now. 72-70. The lead for Aptos in overtime number two. Victory as he fell down. Just threw that one up in the air. Locking foul is going to be called on... Jonah Hodges. Victory a fakes a little bit. Hodges going with him. There was body contact, and I'll tell you, Victory sneakers just blew out from underneath him, and he went and slid right on down. And Jonah Hodges. Victory. This is the front end of the one and one. Well, Hodges is on the floor with five fouls. Yep. And that's what I thought, but it, that's what it, Joey Smith's screaming about. He's he's yelling about it. I did you know the score. The official scores table should have had at least informed the referee as to how many fouls a player has, especially if it's the fifth foul. I have to talk this one over because 
if you're on the floor with 5,000, it's a technical. It's a technical foul. You're right. And I think the discussion here is Tom Smith, who's the head official you see to your right, was talking with Bill Domhoff about the substitutions, and they should have not been shooting the free throws. As you see, victory late, threw it in, but they shouldn't have been shooting the free throws. If that ball was on the floor, yes. Because he was going. He, he was talking, to, talking to, to, to the official Smith about right. the substitution. Yeah, there was a, a couple of different errors that just transferred, that just went through uh, the gym here at Athos High School. Well, for Joey Smith, if I'm him, and there, there should be two. There's two different scenarios here. It's either you shoot the free throws or it's a technical foul. There's not another conclusion. No. He's still pleading his case. Referee is, I don't know if he sued Coach Smith or not, but the discussion is done. Yeah, so Hodges has fouled out. Wow. So they Levy Richards will come in for him. They don't lose too much quickness with Richards with the basketball. He's just as quick as Hodges. Without Hodges, who is running the point, looks like this offense is a little stagnant with 15 on the shot clock. Well, Hodges had them in a, some kind of a rhythm. There's DeMeo, who's going to have to do something with nine on the shot clock. Levy Richards, five on the shot clock. Tries to create over victory. Big bucket, tie ball game. The victory says yes, but I have the basketball. You cannot you lose your feet with victory. If he makes a head fake, you've got to stay on the ground. Sakoto was fouled as he went to the hoop. That was a nice first step by Sakoto to get around Salmon. Salmon, first personal. Going to go to the line for a one and one. Here's some of the bigger free throws for this young player's career. Sakota does not have a point so far in the game. Bill Domhoff and uh, Tom Smith have had many a conversations <laughs> throughout the evening. Front end miss by Sakota. 72 all, 120 remaining. I'll tell you who else is in foul trouble for Santa Cruz, and that's Conroy, number 11. He also has four fouls. So right now you have to play like you have zero fouls. Trying to get the ball down inside to either St. John's, who now has it, or Conroy. St. John to the lane, way strong. Second effort, no good. And Salmon. fouled from behind with Salmon. Great job by the Santa Cruz to get inside on the rebounding position, get inside the Aptos Mariners, thereby being in better rebounding position. Big free throws for Sanitz. He's got two uh, short arms the first. Damn it, looking for his first point. And boy, would it be a nice big first point. Nails it. Ryan Parker, who's a three-point gunner, will come into the game. And he will replace Sakota. Joey Smith doing the smart thing. Get the shooters on the floor. Montoya, Parker, obviously victory. In Harrell can all shoot the rock. Victory. Victory, I think you might be just a little bit too quick for St. John. And Aptos calls the timeout. Joey Smith is, wisely does this, looks at the defense that's on the floor and what type of defense they're running, calls the timeout so he can diagram a play that may get Aptos a couple of points. Well, this has been a wild game. We're in overtime number two. There have been technical fouls. There have been at least 
three or four times where Kurt and I wish we brought our rule books. <laughs> been some strange rulings. Here's when Samet was able to, to keep the play alive. Balzac's got good second effort by St. John's. He went in, but he's not to be denied. You can see he shot the ball, but then went tracking after it. So many times, Tim, not so much underneath, but a shooter will shoot the ball and, and not bother going with it. There's Domhoff right there. He can shoot. No, Clayton has Right every time. 73-72. Oh, just wicked game here. We mentioned Pete Newell Jr. had some old time battles with Aptos himself. Oh yeah. He's got uh, a, a treasure chest of victories and a treasure chest of losses. He's in the house. Not gonna challenge the ball. Great switch up from Bill Dama. Victory. We're going to let him go one on one with St. John. Long range. 75 73 Mariners. Plenty of time. Just don't panic to the Santa Cruz Cardinals. Two second shot clock, game clock, differential. Ball's lost. Hill has it. He is fouled. Aptos with two free throws. I think victory's three-pointer was from oh, somewhere around 30 feet. But you know what, when you're feeling the rhythm and you're coming down, you might as well cast. You never know what you're gonna catch. And you see the three-point line. That is a good seven feet behind it. So we'll give him a 26-6. Split the difference. Pivotal free throws from Harrell with 25.4 left. Misses the first. That keeps Santa Cruz alive. Bill Domhoff calling for a timeout. Uh, it's basically going to come down on a make or on a miss. This is what we're going to do. That's a big, big free throw miss. As if you want to check out this game again, DVD sales, DVD copies available for $25. We had a one overtime game in the first time out uh, for the Santa Cruz Girls Championship game over Soquel. We've got a double overtime game here. So you want to check this one out. There's the information, 831-425-8848. Possession arrow is pointing the way of App toss, but I was to say that's a huge miss because if you're up by four, that means at some point Santa Cruz either needs a steal or they need to hit a three as long as you hit your free throws. Yes. They're going to have to get that one, and if you do hit both of them, you're up by four. The three still has you one behind, so it's a steal or a foul on top of that. So it's a lot of strategy goes on here the last minute of play. I don't care if it's regulation or overtime. We've seen a lot of strategy here tonight, both in the girls, that was won by Santa Cruz 60 to 56, and now here in the boys. Big free throw for the big time 6'3 senior, Jake Harrell. Made it. 76, 73. Aptos fans going crazy. Conroy loses this ball. He just throws it to the tie. Levi Richards is short. Rebound, tipping around. It's out of bounds to Aptos. We've got a discussion. Not going to work. See what type of press that Santa Cruz is going to have to put one on. Harrell was fouled just before he got rid of it to victory. I think with 12 seconds left, both free throws will put this one on ice. I'm not going to argue that one. Up by three, he'd be up by five. That's nothing's insurmountable, but that would be the closest thing to it. Two for Harold. 
Makes the first. Out to a two possession game. And the Aptos fans are going nuts. Unofficially 18 points for Harrell. And about unofficially 27 points for victory. Got them both. Here comes Levy Richards, leaping Lena, not going to be there. Clock going down, bodies all over the place. And the foul is called against Sammons. The Aptos fans rise as one. Danny Victory is fired up. And the Mariners are going to take home an SCCAL championship. Just got to hit a couple free throws with 5.3 left. This is the first one. Never is easy, is it? Looks easy, 15 feet away. Ball half the size of the basket. Second is good. 79-63, Levy Richards. St. John, wide open three, got it. Timeout was called. And the far side officials are going to say 1.1 second. Santa Cruz called the timeout, 79-76. Well, <laughs> you look at these fans, and they'll look at the St. John 3 again, but a lot of people always say conference tournaments, who cares, doesn't mean much, they still got CCS. I, I don't know about that one. Now, this tournament means a lot to both of these squads. Santa Cruz, as we saw on, on the records of the teams, they ended up on top in the league when it all was all said and done. Here's victory. Says, you're going to give it to me? I'll take it. Nylon. Nothing but. But you get into this tournament, there's a lot of pride in the SCCAL with these ball clubs. Santa Cruz wanted the outright championship by winning the league and then winning the uh, SCCAL postseason tournament. Aptos said, no, we don't want you to do it in our backyard. We want to be considered co-champions, if you will. And right now, with 1.1 seconds to go and a three-point lead, Aptos looks like they're going to do it. Well, we thank you for joining us all season long on CTV Sports. We'll have the wrestling championships. Hopefully, half as much excitement in those ones. He's got to inbound the ball. It is to Harrell. And that'll do it. The Aptos Mariners. Champions of the SCCAL, a hard-fought 79-76 victory over Santa Cruz in double OT. Tremendous game. Both of these teams came in and played hard. A quick little shout-out and a special thanks to Athletic Director Mark Domhoff, the Athletic Director here at Aptos High School, for hosting this fantastic set of basketball games. What a great doubleheader in a packed house. A just outstanding pair of basketball games here. We will send it to Rusty Reed in a few moments who has our player of the game. We could go co-players of the game. I mean, a lot of guys that, that are up for this one tonight, but I think two guys stood above the rest, Harrell and Victory. Those would be my selections. They did a fantastic job. Harrell was, to say said, about unofficially 27 points. Nothing better, bigger than that big three from somewhere in the vicinity of the football field when he shot that one up there. And Jake doing such a good job on the boards, defensively blocking shots, and of course scoring. Uh, I have him unofficially for 18 points. So two deserving ball players and uh, in a contest that was well, you know, I'm going to say it was well played because both these teams were going flat out. And it is nothing not left on the floor for both these teams. The, you see the court is scattered. Uh, people everywhere. This was a big victory for the champion Aptos Mariners. And the Aptos Mariners player of the game is standing by with Rusty Reed. 
Well, our George H. Wilson player of the game, double duty here tonight and for good reason. And you guys, I'll tell you, we have Danny Victory and Jake Harrell. I, you guys really earned a league championship tonight. Have you ever been in a tougher, more fun game than this? Oh, this is by far the most exciting game that I've ever experienced in my life. Well, congratulations. Battle in the boards, rebounds, blocks, points, yeah, the whole package. Yeah, thanks. Which is, uh, <laughs> well, let's talk to Mr. Outside. You had the sweet shot going tonight, and that's really what the team needed. Yeah, I was just shooting a ball like I used to, just shooting it. And it didn't seem to be falling so much in the first half, really. I mean, you had a few, but the second half, red hot. Yeah, I was just shooting because shooters shoot, so I was just shooting. Well, so here you are, share the league championship as you go into CCS. Now what's the mindset with the team? Let's just keep winning. We got all the momentum. Let's just keep winning. Jake Harrell, again, the mindset now as you go into CCS. You guys, cloud nine. We're just going to go and just have a, have a bunch of fun and just keep the, our streak going and do try to make a dent in uh, CCS. Go join your teammates. Congratulations. You guys electrified this crowd tonight. Nice job. Danny Victory, Jake Harrell, Aptos Mariners victorious here in this league championship game. Now back to the booth and Tim and Kurt. Oh, thanks, Rusty. Great job as always. We want to thank George H. Wilson, mechanical contractors, family owned and operated for over 90 years, providing heating, plumbing, and mechanical contracting services. George Wilson is a proud member of Think Local First. On the web at G. E O H Wilson.com. Double overtime final. Aptos 79. Santa Cruz 76 will wrap this one up from Aptos High School. After this, you're watching the game of the week on CTV. Back here at Aptos High School. Second seeded Aptos Mariners. 79 76 over top seeded. Santa Cruz to win the SCCAL championship. We want to thank all everybody who's made this game possible. Santa Cruz Diner at Santa Cruz Diner. You'll always find great food at reasonable prices. Family owned and operated since 1998. Santa Cruz Diner is kid friendly and offers a wide selection of traditional and vegan items. Their great staff and comfortable atmosphere will make you feel right at home. Featured on the Food Channel, easy to find on Ocean Street in Santa Cruz on the web at santacruzdiner.com. Great food, price right at the Santa Cruz Diner and by Craft Roddy Shop, serving Santa Cruz County since 1965. Crafts Body Shop specializes in all types of collision and auto body shop repair. Crafts offers free estimate to lifetime warranty and accepts all types of insurance and is diamond certified. Utilizing state-of-the-art tooling and repair equipment, Crafts dedicated staff takes pride in resolving all your vehicle's damages and gaining a customer for life. Call us, 476-3232 or on the web at craftsbodyshop.com. Well, it has been quite a lot of fun here at Aptos High School, a girls game that went to Santa Cruz in overtime, and this boys game, double overtime in favor of the Aptos Mariners. We're Kurt Edwards, I'm Tim Swartz, and uh, you like basketball, <laughs> you love this. Oh, this is this great high school basketball. You couldn't have dialed it up any better. Two teams that really knew each other, similar styles, tremendous athleticism, and to go four periods and then go two more, Great way to end the season here in the SEC AAL. Yeah, it was a full 40 minutes of basketball. Let's take a look at some of the picture to this one and the story. Danny Victory hitting threes. Good ball movement by the Aptos Mariners. Victory gave it up. Didn't get that three. But you watch how Aptos continues to work around. Cole right in there. Gets, gets that shot. Now watch the battle going inside. Jonah Hodges fighting for it. Harold gets it. Well, he almost gets it. Parker says, I got a nice spot of three. I'll drill it. That was three. a good big three. It cut that it to was. a two point lead in the third. Jonah Hodges going very well. Nice assist down there to Conroy. Conroy had a big game for Santa Cruz, as did number 20, Jonah Hodges from three point. And that was a big three point for young Mr. Hodges. There's the man that I always like to watch because not only can he score, but he dishes the ball off very well in that bucket by DeMeo. There's one of those long bombs victory that was just off, but Harrell 
kept it alive. Harrell and Victory is a two-headed monster. We had Harrell with 18, Victory with 27. Martin using his body and good angle going down there for that nice easy layup. There's Harrell again. They forgot where Victory was. They did it. There was a screen, a double switch. Victory made him pay for it. Nice little crossover down the lane. He goes little bitty teardrop and then he bumps. Somebody forgot about Conroy on the other end and he gets a nice easy bucket. And here comes the death nail. That was a big Boom. three. One of six three points shots that at least that I have for victory. Six three point shots for victory on the night. Quite That's a as night. As far as you can count. That, well, no, I can count to seven, but I can't figure out where my other fingers all went. That, That's all. that three from victory was a one point lead at that point, less than a minute left for Santa Cruz. That three made it a 75 73 game. Free throws made by at the end. That did it. Aptos was victorious, 79 to 76 here at Aptos High School. Any final thoughts in this game? Just that it's a fantastic way to go out to the end of the season for both these clubs. They'll find out where their seedings are. With everybody's watching this game, the CCS. We anticipate that both these squads will get some high seedings in their respective decisions. A lot of fun, and of course, the girls' game. Santa Cruz came in. They had to beat Soquel. Soquel came in number one. Santa Cruz came out on top. 60 to 56 in a very exciting overtime game on that one. Just a fun night of basketball, Tim. So we had the eight quarters plus three extra quarters here at Aptos High School. Best of luck to Aptos and Santa Cruz and all the SCCAL teams as they prepare this week for the Central Coast section playoffs. For Kurt Edwards, for the third member of our broadcast crew, Rusty Reed, my name is Tim Swartz. Once again, the final in double overtime. 79-76, the victory for Aptos. We do have one more uh, game here in the f winter season, and it's the wrestling championships. It's a meet, not a game. It's, it's a meet. You'll see 14 bouts, 28 great wrestlers. So it'll be a lot of fun, and we hope to have at least a third of their, or a half of, or some fraction <laughs> of the amount of excitement that we had tonight. Once again, the final in double overtime. The Aptos Mariners get 27 from the man right there, Danny Victory. Just 5'6", but a lot of hearts. 79-76, Aptos defeats Santa Cruz. For, for my broadcast partner, Kurt Edwards, for a third member, Rusty Reed, for our entire CTV crew, I'm Tim Swartz. We'll see you next time.